Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a pleated V pattern. Start by centering your shirt using the sleeve inside the other sleeve technique. And this is a Gildan soft style shirt, and I don't work with them too often. But I'll tell you guys, this shirt really gave me the business trying to center it. I worked on it forever. So I've edited a lot out. I do have a quick little tutorial on how to center your shirt if you want one that's a little more slowed down. Um, this shirt was a pain in the neck. Once you get your shirt all centered, using a washable marker and some sort of a straight edge, you want to mark out your pattern. I'm using my yardstick and I marked out my V, um, I'd say it was about every two inches and you, you can make your V any way that you want to. This is just what I came up with. Now you want to pleat along these lines, making them as straight as possible. And once you get it all pleated up, you want to secure it. And for this project, I'm going to use kite string. I'll tell you guys, I really do like the way that these Gildan soft style shirts feel. They kind of remind me of the way that the rayon jersey skirts feel. Um, there is no rayon in this shirt. It says it's 100% cotton, but they're really soft and, and stretchy. So I was kind of having a hard time getting the pleats, but once I got them going, then it was okay. So you want to continue working on your pleats all the way down to the end of the shirt. And I was having some serious camera difficulties. My head was in the way for a lot of this, so I'm editing it out because all you can see is the back of my head. So like I said, just continue to pleat till you get all the way down to the end and then work your kite string back up to where you started and tie it off with a simple double knot. I have absolutely no idea why I cut that piece of string so long. It's just completely wasteful because you're about to watch me cut all the loose ends off. Now it's time for the fun part. We get to add the dye. And like I mentioned, I don't work with these shirts too often. And I noticed right off the bat that the dye kind of wanted to roll off it a little bit. And the shirt is damp, so, you know, dry shirts, how it repels the dye. Um, this one was kind of doing that too. 
Um, this was really, you're going to see, but it's one really messy shirt to make. So now with the yellow, I'm going to extend it over top of the fuchsia red and the turquoise to create the secondary colors, orange and green. Oh, the beloved Raven Black. It just wouldn't be a t-shirt without it clogging the tip of my bottle. You know, those of you that follow along see that I use Raven Black constantly. I just really love the way it looks against rainbows and other colors. And it just gives me the most trouble out of all of the dyes. And I use an immersion blender when I mix it. And I just don't get it. I mean, I know why it's because, you know, you put eight teaspoons in uh, one cup of water, but I, it just, it's maddening. I get so frustrated and I think you guys can tell by watching how, um, I just get really sloppy because I get, well, I just get really annoyed, but I do love the way it looks. So you see how much dye is ending up down at the bottom of the bin? That's why I'm using my hand to sort of help it stick to the shirt. My overall goal for this shirt is I don't want to oversaturate with the black because I'm hoping to have black and white stripes. Um, you know, so I guess in a way it's working out that most of the black dye is ending up at the bottom of the container instead of on the shirt. I ran out of black dye in the bottle and I wasn't going to go mix more just for that little bit. So I went really unconventional here and I'm just going to, as you see, dip it right in here in all these black puddles and I'm just going for it. This is becoming such a mess anyways, like I had mentioned. Um, so, you know, you just do what you got to do. In a perfect world, this is the type of shirt that I would batch for 24 to 48 hours. I think you're going to achieve the best results. But I was unable to tie dye for almost two weeks and I really needed to see some fresh tie dye in a hurry. 
So I did the microwave method and it's a thousand watts for two minutes. Um, my microwave is unknown as I've mentioned before. So I do three minutes and then I let it cool for like 15 minutes to an hour. And then we begin the rinse out. So look at all that dye going down the drain. And this is because it's not a traditional batch time. So all that dye did not have a chance to bond with the fibers in the cotton. So, you know, yeah, you get instant results, but you know, what a waste of all that dye. But anyways, so the shirt is cold. So you wanna start by using cold water and that's going to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fibers. And then you gradually increase your water up too hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I do a plain hot water cycle. And that's because I'm washing several things at one time and I want the washing machine to agitate all that loose dye out. And then I do a second hot water cycle using Synthropol and that attaches to all that, you know, other loose dye and takes it away. And it's called Kiralon now if you're looking to buy it. And I have a link for it down below in the description box along with everything else that I use for tie dye. So make sure you check that out. And then the third thing I do is a hot water cycle using Milsoft. And that brings softness back into the fabric after the dyeing process. And it's not a necessary step, but I really like it a lot. And I get all that stuff from Dharma. And then I throw everything in the dryer and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Right here I ran to the washing machine and I turned it on. That's one thing I don't think I talk about very often but I like to um, get my washing machine like ready to go. So when I begin my rinsing process, I have it filling up. I feel like I don't want a bunch of shirts sitting on top of each other um, waiting for it to fill up. I want to toss them in an already hot water ready to go washing machine. Well, here it is guys. Here's our shirt after it's been washed and dried. And I think it turned out pretty good considering it took just a little over an hour to create from start to finish. So yeah, that's not too bad. You know, it's nice and vibrant. And I was a little worried I wasn't gonna have any white stripes cause you know, the black was just, that was a lot of black, but I've got them. Um, it is throwing off a little bit of pink and Raven does have a tendency to lean more towards the red when it uh, splits, but I don't mind. Uh, overall, I'm super happy with the shirt, so what do you guys think? Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up, and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.